Hey guys, Juan Morocco 258 or Travis Wade. <sighs> good times, good times. Freaking hands are, well, as you can tell, kinda. Well, my hands are filthy. <sighs> Reason why? I had to work on the Redneck Cowboys or Taylor Wade. Um, his car, he has a 2000 Ford Taurus SES with 193000 with a rebuilt transmission that he paid $800 for. We had to replace his sway bar links to get his car from stop clunking in the front end. So... That did not fix the issue a hundred percent. So now what we have to do is we gotta pull the front struts and the rear struts off and replace all four struts. And that'll be no problem. Cause those are pretty easy to do. Um, so I replace all four struts at $140 a piece, Monroe Crick struts. And then, uh, we got his ball joints, which are Moog. Um, don't have the part number for the sway bar links or the ball joints, but $140 for Moog ball joints. The first time we did his ball joints, he bought ball joints off of eBay. Worst fucking mistake you could ever do for your car. I'm telling you right now, that is the worst mistake you can ever do to your car. The reason why is because of if you buy a part from eBay and it's faulty, you got to send the part back. You can't drive a car with no ball joints. It won't steer. It won't drive. So we didn't send them back. We just, he spent $140 on ball joints. And we got him installed and got our got his sway bar links, which was the driver's side was a bitch until we learned how to do it. Um, and uh, we got that done like that. It probably took us about an hour and 30 minutes to do both sway bar links. Could have took us a little shorter time to get them done if we actually knew how to untension it um so the thing isn't pressing against the sway bar link um but that's okay so we got his car 98 percent of the things fixed which is great now we just need four struts and his suspension will be rebuilt except for one tie rod end and it'll be done So, we got his car done today, and now we are going to be doing, well, I'm not going to be doing, and he's not going to be doing, because they're a complete and utter pain in the fucking ass. Uh, we are going to be taking my car in Salt Lake City to Ability Auto, Automotive Care great guys over there they've checked they checked out my brother's car told him exactly what's wrong with it and so on and so forth so <clears throat> we are going to be taking my car over there to get all three transmission mounts done and one motor mount um because my transmission mounts are screwed and i mean screwed <laughs> <laughs> um, they are basically, whenever I put my transmission in reverse or drive, the motor rocks forward and rocks backwards really bad when it's not really supposed to. So that'll be fixed um, once I get a job that is actually worth a damn and be able to uh, get my own place. So, yeah.
next order of business where am I going to be staying well there's a couple options that I have in mind for me to live um, for me to have a place to live so I got a couple options that I might think about because right now I'm staying in my car we uh, might buy an old 70s Dodge motorhome and uh, put a little bit of work into it and live in that full time even though there's no place to park it out here which is not true we are I'm, I'm thinking about that because I can find them for like a thousand bucks all day and you know I got a whole laundry list of things that I could do to it to make it livable <clears throat> so I'm thinking about doing that or might get a room for rent or I don't know yet we'll see it's either a room for rent or buy an RV which I'm kind of leaning towards the RV idea the reason why is because I like the concept of living off the grid you know going up in the mountains and parking my RV where I'd like to and go up in the mountains and just enjoy the weekend go fishing go hiking go rock hunting you know stuff like that stuff like that would make it so cool to do when I have spare time so we might live in an RV which that's the thing I'm leaning towards um, so I might this one I might do I'm probably going to be buying a full-size uh, pickup I mean like a three-quarter ton pickup and making a truck bed camper out of a camper shell well, not camper shell uh, um, the bed shell um, that you can put on top of it and uh, putting uh, cot in there with some uh, with some uh, uh, memory foam on top of it and yeah I'm gonna be doing I'm thinking about doing that and getting rid of the olds because this car just needs a little bit too much work so I might do that so put a cot in there build some shelving uh, put in other stuff you know put in a little flat screen TV and a little generator for the back of it yes I am cracking my knuckles at the moment hang on so yeah might do that um, I'm either thinking a Chevy 1500, maybe a Ford Ranger, I mean an older Ford Ranger. Uh, might do a Ford F-150, might do a Dodge, uh, might do, you know, Ford Chevy or Dodge, or might get a Toyota, might get a Toyota pickup, we'll see if I can find one cheap enough with the either the V6 or the four cylinder. I do not particularly care which one, which either one of them will be fine. So, let's wind up this window. Um, but I'm still leaning towards the RV idea. Just a little 22 to 25 foot uh, mini Winnie with air conditioning if it comes with air conditioning and if it's to the point where I can get the air conditioning working if the air conditioning even works um, so we're gonna do that we're I think that's what I think that's what we're gonna do 
I think we're going to do the RV. Um, tint all the windows except for the front ones. I'm probably going to do the most legal tint available for the state of Utah. Um, get it emissions and inspected as soon as I get it. And uh, we're going to try and find one with good tires. Not dry rotted. Probably a 360 or a 440 power plant. Um, but yeah. So that's what we're going to... I think that's what we're going to do. I'm going to start looking on KSL. To see if anybody has one for sale. After... Because it's starting to become spring. And, start, and people are starting to buy those really fast. So, if it comes to the point where we're going to have to get a room for rent for till winter, that's fine. Um, so, if I'm leaning, I'm leaning towards the RV idea. Um, we're going to try and see if we can find one with a generator. If not, then we'll just get a little 2,000 watt generator off of Amazon. They have some good ones on there and with some good reviews that are like 150 bucks. A little 2000 watt generator will do me good because all I need to run is a flat screen TV, my fridge, my heater, my air conditioner, you know, stuff like that would, you know, make it beneficial to have a generator and run it and pay for the gas and insurance and all that nice shit. Um, but yeah. <coughs> so. That will probably be the plan that we're going to be going for. Um, I was having plans to go to the gathering this year, but plans have changed. I don't have the money to go. It's too far away. They said it was going to be in Denver, and then they changed their minds and put it in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. Which kind of pissed me off a little bit, but, you know, wow, dude, this is Salt Lake City. Yeah, uh, I, I wish there was a cop right here. There was no reason for you to go that fast. Dumbass. Um, but yeah, so putting a two to 4,000 watt generator, probably find one maybe at a pawn shop that runs. Maybe that'd be good and just clean out the carburetor and clean out the tank. Um, and then probably put some solar panels, uh, get... A Xbox One, a 32 inch Vizio smart TV. Uh, we're gonna have my Dell XPS, I think it's a 1560. My buddy's wiping his stuff off it because it's his old computer and putting Windows 7 on it. And then eventually I'll upgrade it to Windows 10 because um, I absolutely despise Windows 7 now because it's outdated. Uh, and then we're going to have some laptop upgrade videos. We're going to do some tech. Uh, we're going to do some other things. You guys are going to be very, very, very happy. This is going to turn into a technology and RV channel. You know, so putting technology in an RV that is more than 40 years old. You know, so, you know, putting technology into that you know living in an rv how do i do it what do i do how do i dump my tanks where do i go for service uh where can i park a 70s rv because most campgrounds are now either 96 or 2000 and newer um and how do i hook up a trailer to my rv so i can put my tow car or my, not my tow car, my car on the back of it and, you know, wire up lights and stuff like that because if you have a front wheel drive car, you can't uh, put it down on all four wheels because it is very, very, very risky because you could blow up your transmission and you don't want that. So, car dolly, we're going to show you how to hook that up with some lights and everything uh we're probably just gonna get the one we drive up on the dolly with our front wheels and let the rear wheels spin which will be fine and then uh we'll show you you know things where you know you can where you can uh 
park your RV and just say, hey, you know, if I'm going to park in a Walmart, say, hey, um, is it okay if I stay here overnight at the Walmart parking lot and I'll be out by tomorrow morning? Sure, no problem, blah, blah, blah. Now, most Walmarts in the Utah state do not allow RV parking because, one, people stay there way too damn long. Second, uh, people abuse, you know, the rules of their parking lot and then that ruins the rest of everything for other people who are RVers. Three, um, you know, they're just either dumping their takes in the parking lot or, you know, because that's just gross. Why would you do that? And they're, you know, they're chucking piss bottles and other shit like that. It is not cool. It is not fun. And it smells disgusting. So, um, but yeah. And we're going to show you cooking in the RV. It's a little bit more difficult to cook in an RV. I lived in one. It is not too hard to cook in one, but it takes a little longer to cook anything. Um, you know, we're going to show you how to play Tetris with your fridge and uh, freezer in your RV. We're going to show you how to do that because <laughs> that's kind of... Uh, you know, a thing where you're going to have to figure out what can I fit in my freezer? What can I fit in my fridge? You know, because if you have a full-size pizza and it doesn't fit in your freezer, what are you going to do? You can't, you have to cook it that night because it'll go bad. Um, you know, how, where do I get my propane tanks filled? Where do I do this? Where do I do that? Where do I do this? Where do I do that? You know, exactly. So, yeah, anyways, um, so sorry I'm just rambling on, but, uh, you know, we'll, we're probably going to buy an RV, either uh, Class C or Class A. I'm kind of leaning towards the Class A motorhome, um, and uh, so, yeah. Anyways, guys, I'll talk to you guys later, and... Uh, let me know in the comment section if you have any uh, ideas of what you guys would like to see on my channel and what uh, things I can improve on or not improve on. Alright guys, peace.